Hey guys, so I'm gonna be talking about merging OAuth accounts. So this is a concept where when you have multiple ways to log in. So for example, you could allow people to log in with Facebook and Google and Twitter, and they can log in with just a username and password. And someone can click Facebook for the first time they log in, but then for the next time they might just log in with the email and password if they had registered with that before. So what you want to do is you don't want to create two separate accounts, one for their Facebook and one for their username and email, or their email and password, but merge those accounts together. So they have one account where both the email and password and the Facebook ID merge together. And the same thing, if they then log in with Google, you merge those into one. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So here I have my user model. You'll notice I used to split off the Facebook stuff into a different table, but I only really care about the Facebook ID in this case. So if I'm only caring about one um, ID, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the table itself. So I have this in the user table, and you'll notice I created an index for it, and that's because I'm going to be searching it whenever the user logs in with Facebook, so I figured it'd be a good idea to make an index. I could probably index the email field too, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea to index that as well. And it might be already indexed with the, because it's unique. I can't remember if it auto indexes or not. But anyway, side note. So we have the Facebook ID here, then we have an username, email, and password. Now we could replicate this. Let's say if we had a Facebook or a Twitter, this could be a Twitter ID, this could be a Google ID, any other OAuths that you want to do, you can do the same concept. And then what I'm using is Passport. If you've seen my earlier videos, I show you how to set this up, Passport with Facebook. Um, that way you can do OAuth. Um, I changed a little bit how it works. You'll notice also I'm using localhost. Um, a guy posted in the comments showing how to do this. So that's super nice. Um, basically, you do not need to do ingrok to test this locally. You can just have your callback URL to localhost. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. So here I'm also this is another important one um, how do I merge accounts I'm merging when the email is the same so if I have a different email that I'm using for Twitter and uh, then my Facebook I can't really merge those accounts because you don't know if they're the same thing you only really want to merge when they use the same email so that's what we're doing uh, and to get the email from Facebook we have to ask for the email scope and then we say we want to get the ID and the email when we actually do OAuth with Facebook. So now there's three cases when um, the user clicks our OAuth button um, on our website. They, this is either their first time clicking the Facebook login button, they've logged in with Facebook before, or they have registered an account on our website with that email. So here's the first thing that happens. Profile is what we get back from the Facebook OAuth after they log in with their account. We get their email and their ID. So I'm storing the email value and value and um, the ID and ID. And then the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to search my database to see if the user is in the database at all. So I'm looking for an ID where the Facebook ID is that or an email to see if this email is already in our database. So the first thing I check is if we even get a user back at all, if we have the ID or the email in the database. If we don't, we know this is their first time clicking the button or you know that email is not associated with any accounts. So what we'll do is we go ahead and create a user for them, passing in the ID and the email. And then we just do the callback regularly. Now, let's say they log in again. And uh, they logged in previously with Facebook we're gonna check if they have a Facebook ID. If they already have a Facebook ID, that's fine. We keep going, right? We don't need to create another user account for them. So if they have a Facebook ID, because we created one for them right here, then when we fetch this user, the user is gonna exist and they're gonna have an ID, so they're good. We don't have to worry about it. We don't need to do anything else. But case three is when they've previously registered with an email. Um, and we'll see this in example in a second. And when they've registered with an email what we want to do is actually uh, the Facebook ID is going to be null right because they did not sign up with Facebook they signed up with uh, just an email 
So then we just set the Facebook ID, which is successfully merges the accounts together. So that's what this merge is doing here. I'm just updating this user um, and setting the ID. So let's see this in action and what this looks like. So here, right here is a little form. I'm gonna go ahead and register. So I'm gonna use my email here that is associated with my Facebook account. I'm gonna go ahead and register. My registration worked. I'm now gonna come over here and log in. So if I were to log in with this account, um, let's see what my, first off, this is psql so I can look at the PostgreSQL database and I'm just going to select the user and we can kind of see here's the result. Um, you notice we have this password here that's long that's why this is stretching out and the Facebook ID is right here and it is blank. And Let's just select a few fields so it's not so long. So ID, Facebook ID, username, email. And you'll notice how the Facebook ID is actually blank. And that's because, of course, we didn't log in with Facebook. So now when the user logs in with Facebook, we're going to know, hey, this email is the same one as the Facebook, and it'll fill this value in. So, But first, let's log in. So, oops, I double-clicked it, but the login worked. You'll notice our user ID is 1. And then if I log in with Facebook, um, I just redirect to home. You'll notice the user ID is one. We come back over here, we do a select. You'll notice how the Facebook ID is now filled in. And we only have one user still. We did not create a new user. So that's very important. So now I want to show you how this works um, the other way. So let's say they did Facebook first and then they registered for an account because that can happen too. Um, that's weird but it can happen. Uh, the first case which I just showed you is more common. I'm just going to come down here and I have force true which will reset the database for us. Um, that way we can start over and here's what the resolver now looks like. So if they logged in with Facebook first um, we're going to be setting only the Facebook ID and email. So the username and the password are going to be null. So what I can do is I can check where the email and password, I could also check the um, username but I, I didn't worry about it. But basically the password is null but the email exists. So then we know there is a previous account that has that email. Uh, well not a previous account, they previously logged in with Facebook because the password's null. So then what we're doing is we're just, we already know this, they have a previous account, so we're just updating the username and password. Otherwise, if they don't have a previous account, they didn't log in with Facebook before, we just create the user regularly. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna first log in with Facebook. Nice, so we have, we're all logged in. Now I can do slash register. If I come over here, we notice how the username is blank, and if we also grab the password, that should be null as well. So then we're going to do this check. So I'm about to register, right? The values come in. We're going to find uh, where the email is equal to Benawad, because that's what I'm going to put here. So then Benawad. and then the password the, where the password is null, which we saw that value in the database. We're gonna hash the password like usual, and the previous account will exist because we, we just logged in with Facebook and we see it in the database. So then we're gonna update the username and password so it's all good. So let's go ahead and register. We update the user. Now if I come back over here, we notice how my username is Ben and my password's here. So now I can come in and register. So no matter how I register, it's going to get the same, or no matter how I log in now, uh, I get the same thing. So if I log in, login worked, and my user ID is 1, or I can log in with Facebook, and my user ID is 1. So pretty neat. This is important just to keep the accounts 
alt and sync and you don't want the user logging in with a different thing and then losing their account status you don't want to create a new one for them and so you would take this same approach over here with the Facebook ID how I'm doing it in this OAuth here you would do that same thing if you had a let's say Google OAuth or a Twitter OAuth or any type of OAuth to merge the account based on the email field. So that is it for this video guys. Links in the description below with the uh, code up on GitHub if you want to check out either this code or the front end code that runs this because this front end is in React right now. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.